Many LED Christmas lights blink on and off at 50 or 60 Hz depending on the AC mains power where you live. I don't like this blinking. It's easy to see it if you take a video and slow it down. This scene shows two strands of Christmas lights. The one on the left contains two groups of 50 LEDs each. You can see the 60 Hz blinking in the slowed video and that the two groups blink in an alternating fashion. This video is about measuring the frequency of the blinking using a photo transistor, an ESP32 microcontroller, and some other stuff. You can see that the LED strand on the right does not blink. I modified it using a bridge rectifier and filter capacitor. I may make a short video about this, but I don't recommend this Christmas light surgery. I think it makes a somewhat dangerous product even more dangerous. So this video is about building a gadget to measure the Christmas light blinking. It's not difficult. Here's the gadget. On the right, you see a pipe. There's a photo transistor in it. It measures the intensity of the light. On the left, you see an ESP32 microcontroller module next to a screen that displays results. It shows the frequency of the blinking and also a waveform showing the intensity of the light. It alternates between these two. Measuring light intensity with a photo transistor is easy. Just be sure you get one that has reasonable sensitivity to visible light. Avoid black ones. They are for infrared. Then, connect the phototransistor in series with a resistor and probe with your oscilloscope. More light causes more voltage across the resistor. You can see a scope capture of a Christmas light blinking at 60 Hz with a 20% duty cycle. If you have a pocket-sized battery-powered oscilloscope, you're done. Go measure lights blinking. But my oscilloscope is not portable, so I decided to build something. It's simple, but was more interesting than I expected. Here's the gadget's architecture. On the left, we have our phototransistor and resistor. There is also a potentiometer voltage divider that creates a threshold voltage. These feed into an op-amp configured as an inverting comparator. This converts the light signal that may not be fast rising and full scale into a better signal, one that rises and falls quickly and is full scale. The inverting comparator output signal is high whenever the light signal is below the threshold set by the potentiometer. The comparator output drives an interrupt pin on the ESP32. It triggers on the rising edge. The ESP32 finds the signal frequency by measuring the time between the rising edges. An analog to digital converter on the ESP32 captures the light intensity signal at a reasonable sampling rate. This appears on the OLED screen as a waveform. The signal level of the threshold signal is also measured and displayed. ESP32 analog to digital converters are not very good, but they're good enough for this. Here are a few more circuit details. You can pause and study them if you wish. Ignore the sine wave generator V2. It's only for simulation since I have no idea how to simulate a phototransistor in LT-SPICE. The op-amp you use matters. It needs to work rail to rail, or at least nearly so. It also needs to work with a 3.3 volt supply. I found the MCP6002 to be an excellent choice. They are cheap and still available in dip packages from DigiKey in the USA. This is a good op-amp for projects involving a 3.3 volt microcontroller. Note that I first tried using an LM393 comparator that was in a kit from China that I bought on Amazon. This means that I can't be exactly sure what that part is. LM393s in general are notorious for some oscillation at the signal edges. I tried a couple of techniques to eliminate this without total success, so I gave up and switched to the op-amp. Resistor R1 is important. It gives the comparator hysteresis, meaning the thresholds on the rising and falling edges are slightly different. This eliminates bouncing right at the threshold point. You can easily find videos on hysteresis on YouTube. Now let's test some Christmas lights. Here's the strand from the beginning of the video. Remember, this is the one that has two groups of 50 LEDs, and the first group lights on the positive phase of the AC, and the other group lights on the negative. So if we make a measurement, let's say of this orange LED here, okay, we see 60 Hertz with a duty cycle that's about 25%. Um, but these two LEDs, these green LEDs that are taped together, those are both from different groups. So if I measure those, we see something different. It's measuring 119 Hertz and we actually see two different kinds of peaks. And one of them is the LED, the shorter one, say, is, is one of the groups, and the taller peak is, is an LED from the other group. And they're at different amplitudes because the LEDs aren't stuck in the tube equally. 
And that also causes a, a little bit of jitter in the edge detection, and that makes the, uh, the frequency measurement off by just a little bit. But here you see you know, basically both phases because of the two bulbs. Here's a Christmas tree with incandescent Christmas lights, so we don't expect any blinking at all if we make a measurement. And we just see no edge detected and no sign of blinking. Here's a white LED string outside, so we'll take a measurement. And we see a 60 hertz pattern with a pretty good duty cycle. This Christmas tree is interesting. It has white LEDs that are powered by what is marked a 30 volt uh, power supply. So one thinks they might be DC, but let's see what happens if we make a measurement. And we see something surprising. It's measuring 157 hertz, 156 hertz. So these are blinking at a fast and very unobjectionable rate, but it's surprising that they're blinking in a detectable way at all. I would have thought they were driven by a switching power supply, uh, giving something that would be more like DC or at least so high frequency that this detection scheme would not be able to see any blinking. Here's that LED string's power supply. I'd like to dissect this and figure out how it works and what it's doing, but I probably won't because I like these LEDs. These are some LED tube lights overhead and they're interesting. Let's see what the meter is showing. So it looks like they're fluctuating um, without turning on, on and off completely. Instead, the their intensity is fluctuating at what looks like 120 hertz. Now if I hold it just right, that waveform will be where the threshold can pick up an edge, which it's doing now. So it's measuring the fluctuation in intensity at 120 hertz. So my guess is that the LEDs in these tube lights are, are bridge rectified, they're fully rectified, but there's not much filtration going on or not very good, not a very good filter capacitor. But that's just a guess. But in any case, it, it looks like there's 120 hertz um, intensity fluctuation. Now that we've seen our gadget operating with real-world Christmas lights, we can do some more careful scientific testing by driving the, the gadget with an LED that is controlled by a function generator. And then we can systematically try different frequencies and uh, different waveforms and see how well the gadget deals with them. We have the gadget's display in the upper right and the ADALM2000 controlling the test LED. So to start with, we are generating via the test LED a six kilohertz square wave. And we can see that the gadget is having some trouble measuring that frequency and the display is worthless. So let's drop down to five kilohertz and see if it can measure that. The display remains pretty worthless. And uh, the, yeah, so now we're starting, starting to get some accuracy in the measurement at 5 kilohertz. So let's try 4 kilohertz. And uh, it measures that reasonably well, but the display is still pretty bad. Let's drop down a lot to 2 kilohertz. So we can measure the frequency, but the display is still bad. 1 kilohertz. Now the display starts to become useful and the uh, measurement isn't too far off. And 500 hertz. And the display starts to look good, and the measurement is pretty good too. And then at 200 hertz, we'd expect it to work because we were doing 120 hertz without too much trouble. So there's 200 hertz with a nice display. And let's try 100 hertz, which of course looks good. 50 hertz, we'd expect that to be very good. 20 hertz, still good. 10 hertz, and that looks good. 5 hertz, still looks good, 2 hertz, and that looks very good too, and I'm not going to go any lower because I don't expect that to work. Now let's go back up to a kind of a re reasonable frequency, say 50 hertz, and try different waveforms and see if the display can show them with some accuracy. So how about a triangle wave? And so it measures the frequency correctly, and look at that. 
um, it's able to measure the or actually display the triangle wave in in a reasonably good way and to do this i've had to make sure that the intensity of the led the test led is not so high that it's saturating the the uh, photo photo transistor so we could try a sine wave and see what that looks like and we're only going to see the upper half um, because the lower part of the sine wave isn't a high enough voltage to light the led so that makes sense and how about a rising um, sawtooth so that's pretty good and a falling saw sawtooth and let's go back to the tri triangle wave and show what happens if we increase the intensity of the led so first we'll look at the triangle again and then let's make this um, 5 volts with a 2.5 volt offset and you can see that the LED is now bright enough at the top end to saturate so it doesn't show the triangle pretty well. But I still think it's interesting that the phototransistor in this simple setup is actually able to see a waveform you know, produced in light. So that's kind of fun. And finally, let's look at the ADALM2000 uh, measuring the output of the uh, phototransistor using its oscilloscope and see if that waveform matches what we're seeing on the gadget. So we go to the oscilloscope, start it running, and we see exactly the same image. So once again, the, uh, the gadget's doing a remarkable job of capturing light. I'll end this video here. I'll put a link below to the ESP32 Arduino code used. Happy holidays, best wishes for your new year, and thanks for watching.